All right, here we go. Sheik Luch from the Legendary Locks Absolutely. Crew. Absolutely. Vlad, what's good, family? Man, we were talking before the cameras turned on. Absolutely. Uh, our man. last interview was 12 years ago. 12 years ago. Absolutely. And um, yeah. uh, I was also, I caught up to some of your crew one time. I was doing a video with Eric Sermon and um, Joel Ortiz. And um, I went into the trailer and was chopping up with some of your people too. Yeah, so we've been in touch, but it's been a while. You look good, man. It's been a while. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You, you just, as well. For y'all, y'all well, don't man. know, we used to talk about uh, uh, health and fitness and, and our families. So, you know, that's how far yeah. we go back, man. Yeah. No, absolutely. Our, our last interview was when you dropped that album on Def Jam. It was yeah. 2008, uh, the year we launched Vlad TV. But we actually go back wow. farther than that. Yeah, Remember absolutely. Remember I was yeah, out yeah. in Yonkers yeah, yeah. filming y'all all that, all that. Super Mario and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, before, before we start, first of all, you have a new album out, Beast Mode 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beast Mode 4, man. It's like a uh, a series of, uh, it's like, a, I call them mixtapes, but um, uh, I'm on volume four right now, Beast Mode 4. And, uh, but this particular one, everybody loving it. Shit is monster. It's fire right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I listened to the whole thing. And, and the first thing that really caught my ears was St. Ides Flow. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did the whole biggie. And, yeah. Yeah. And and I know that it's not on accident that y'all did the, the biggie New joint. York, New York beat by, by Dog Pound. Right. Which is very ironic yeah. because that beat was dissing New York yeah, 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 yeah. during the whole East Coast, yeah, West Coast yeah. beat. So I know y'all did that on purpose. Absolutely. And then and that's the one that Big Rhyme to in the St. Ives commercial. Ah, okay, right. That's why I called it St. Ives Flow. Yeah, he did that in the St. Ives commercial. Yeah, absolutely. Ah. Yeah, okay. kept the whole name, okay. St. Ives Flow. Word. <laughs> Oh yeah, man. And then uh so some really dope features on it. Uh, yeah. Benny, Benny the Butcher did his thing on it. Absolutely, man. Shout out to the whole Griselda. I mean, I get asked this question a lot and I love them brothers, uh uh, uh what they're accomplishing right now. How they how, you know, um they ain't jeopardizing their integrity at all, man. They're sticking to their guns and what they what they do. And that's 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 it, you know. Oh yeah, man. I mean, Ghostface showed up. Yeah, which, absolutely. You, know, you guys had had projects already. You know, yeah. of course, Jada and Styles is on yeah, it. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. man. Absolutely. Great, great project. And it's nice to see. You know, I remember uh, you guys were talking. I think it was on Who Kids Show about how you guys had to wait a while to really get your business together. Where you guys yeah. now, you know, have access. You know to the actual ownership of the project. Yeah. So you can check your streams and check your revenues. You yeah. don't have to go through a label and a middleman. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you guys are taking advantage of that by dropping more projects. By dropping more projects. I mean, um, that was one of the major things, like especially with Styles. He didn't want to sign no else until we like have the ownership and we can do whatever we want with the material. Like right now I could put it on whatever movie and whatever this and that without asking anything. You know what I mean? Which is great. You know what I mean? And um, far as all the projects, you know, we got it. It's a young boy game, man. So we, and we're dope at what we do. So we just keep putting out material, more material, just like, cause we dope at it, like we can. You know what I mean? You been, we been, we got on our own studios and all that stuff, so it's, it's all good. Word. Yeah, I mean, really, the older we get, the one thing that's very, very clear when you start separating the people that end up doing well financially yeah. is ownership. Absolutely. Yeah, man. I learned that, I learned that as I start buying these houses. I start buying all these properties and all that, man, from here to down south in Atlanta and three here and two here. It's like, and I got, I got tenants all over the place. So, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful feeling. It's tough, but it's a beautiful feeling, you know? Oh, that's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Can you say how many properties you own now? Five. Five. Okay. Yeah, five properties. That's what's up. Yeah, absolutely. With tenants. With tenants. With tenants. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and then here come this corona shit, you know, and uh, some people don't got the rent. And so, you know, you got to deal with stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge, but it's, it's pretty, it's cool. I'm a cool right, landlord, though. A... I'm a pretty cool landlord. Yeah, yeah. I bet. <laughs> I wouldn't mind Cheek as a landlord. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool landlord. You know, I'm sure you get a demo every so often. Yeah, no, nah, I mean? nah, they don't really do it too much. It'd be a lot of like, well, I got I got property managers as well that go deal with stuff. But um, when I do yeah. show up, it's like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? There's a lot of that. You know, But the crazy, I always tell people to start, like the crazy flip side of it is the rent that we owe, being that I'm so cool, right? But the rent that we got to pay, like our stuff. Place, other places, they don't give a fuck. They want their money. You know? They want their yeah. money, these other places, man. Everybody's not so cool. But it's, eh, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? What, didn't you uh, own a car wash? In yeah, 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 the D-Block car wash. It's still, actually still there in Yonkers. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Still there. I love it, man. I love, I love diversity. All the juice bars. And... We got all the, well, Styles and Kiss got all the juice bars and all that. Yeah, yep. I think they got like five of them, if I'm not mistaken right now. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right, man. Locks, locks is financially stable. Man. Yeah, definitely, man. Like you have, you got to do something with the money. We got the kids and all that, man. You got to do something with it. Yeah. Besides the cars yeah. and the jewelry and all that. Well, you know, that's that's when you're young. As you get older, you you start seeing it different. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. Yep. Well, you know, we've done other interviews before, but I kind of want to get the chic story. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So I want to start in the beginning. So yeah. you grew up uh, in Yonkers. Yeah. And what was Yonkers like in the '80s? Yonkers, New York, like same as everywhere else, as far as like uh, the hustlers, crack moving around, um, hip hop was taking off. Um, you know, uh, 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 this the whole hip hop scene was dope. Um, all our projects was 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 live. The hustlers was the niggas you worshipped, worshipped and looked up to, um, and that's what it was, man. In school, we went, we just going to school, youngins. That's it, playing uh, little league sports, football, and all that basketball. Yeah. We just knew we was destined though for something great. Something great. Well, before before the hip hop shit really took off for you guys. Yeah. Were you were you mixed up in the streets or did yeah, you no, kind of course. stay Well, no, we're not in the 80s. That came a little later. You know what I mean? Like we was we was nah, we went to, we was playing like tag and shit like that. And you know, in football and team touch football in the park and all that shit at a certain age. You know what I mean? Later on is when we wanted the money and we wanted to, you know, get some crack and bag it up and do what we had to do. That's later. You know what I mean? Before he was just looking at yeah. the guys getting it and coming through with their chicks and buying them pocketbooks and seeing them beat up crackheads and like, you know, it was all like incredible to you. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, with the crack comes uh the violence. No, well, absolutely. Uh, comes the prison time. Absolutely. Comes the rip-offs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, no, comes I, the double not, crossing, comes yeah. the snitching. You come, know? I'm so, not I'm not glorifying all that. I get it. I get that uh yeah. that comes with all the stuff. But when you're young, you're looking at them as the guys that had the money. The young boy, the um, the uh, the hustlers out there, you know, you young, you like, man, can't wait to like get that car like them or this and that or do whatever, you know. So that's how it yeah. was for us. Like in in the city, wasn't it? Wasn't the? It might have been some of the basketball players, but it was it was the hustler that you was looking to. Yeah, he had the, he had the chicks around him. I mean, when you were in the streets, what do you think was you know before before the hip hop took off? What do you yeah. think was the worst situation you ever got into? Uh... I think it was this basic shit with us, like, and it's, it sucks that we're saying basic. As far as the shootouts, as far as this um, uh, uh, regular fights, as far as, uh, yeah, that's about it. Shootouts and, and, and regular fights and shit like that. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. Yeah. Did you, did you ever get hit yourself? No, 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 no. Thank God. I say that all the time to my brothers, man. Like, yo, we've been through a lot. We done, we done, done stuff and this and that. And, um, and, um, and think the God is so good that man, He never like let none of us go down, man. You know, from from back then on up to like uh, um, uh, making it back home off these tours and shit like that. You know, yeah, all kind of situations, yeah, man, that we've been in, and we came up out of that, man. Came up out of that. That wasn't that wasn't because I'm extra skillful. I'm some kind of ninja or something. Nah, He did that. He made us come home safe. No, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. So. You grew up with Jadakiss as yeah. little kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yonkers, New York. Um, uh, same, same projects. Same side of town. It was like our parents seemed had to move everywhere at the same time. Like, um, when I get dropped off on Riverdale, kids were getting dropped off on Riverdale to his grandmother, and our parents lived on the same side of town on Ravine and, and Glenwood Gardens and all that. And his parents, like you know, and then when hey, I get dropped off at my other grandmother's house back then, you, you, you get dropped off at your your father's house or your mom's parents or whoever's you know the, the grandparents' house. So I was in Whitney Young, he was in Whitney Young all the time, and his grandmother lived on the third floor, I'm on the first floor. So we was always tight like that. And um, that's how, and then Styles was on, on a whole different side of town, he came along a little later. Yeah, but uh, if you know the story, like, and Kiss was this, this rapping, he was rapping and shit for fun, no projects out or nothing like that, but for fun, and I was just with him like all the time, like, damn, that's dope. We used to go upstairs from his grandmother's house to Steve Toon house, and he had one turntable, and his man used to cut. While Kiss was rapping on beats, and I was like, "Yo, I, I want to do this, man. This is that's hot. How, how, how you put those words together like that?" And that's how it was. Uh, okay, it, did Kiss have the throat problems back then as a kid? As well, <laughs> you said did, throat. Did that come later? <laughs> the throat problems. Well, well, now it sounds like heard... a computer chip is in there, so right? Like, yeah, yeah. Nah, that's just him. He actually never had no problem. It's, it's no problem with his throat. Really? Because I I'd heard maybe I'm wrong, but I'd heard that. He he needed to get his his you know 
as an adult, he would have to go to the hospital every so often to kind of get his, his sinus and all kind of cleared out. Or, nah, nah, nah never. Hell no, not that. Well, shit, kids, you gotta tell me about that. Let you keeping it from me. Nah, okay. never that. <laughs> nah, kiss, kiss okay. is automatically. That's how he sound from back then on up to now. That's his voice for real, for real. I I told okay. him. We told him years ago. Um um um, what you call that shit? That the voiceover shit was inevitable. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it, you you got to do that shit. Like you know, the, you know. It's crazy. Okay, just a, a very unique voice. Yeah, I got asked for that shit. Yo, how long have you been going to the hospital for your voice, bro? I'm going to ask for that shit. <laughs> Definitely unique, yeah. And, 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 and Okay. Was, yeah. So, well, I guess you and Kiss form a group called the Bomb Squad? Initially? Yeah, Bomb Squad. Uh, we was also the Warlocks. Yeah, man, mm-hmm. all that. You know, we was rapping. We started rapping and making um, mixtapes all around Yonkers. You know, the, the regular TDKs. Put the tissue on top, push dub and record and all that, and um, and uh, started this sell- first. This giving them out to people, cause the other side had fucking like Luther Vandross on the other side, and one side had like eight songs that about uh, the Bomb Squad and the Warlocks, and uh, and just giving them to people, and then finally bringing them to high school, and selling them for five dollars a, a, a tape, and that's how it, I mean they, we couldn't hold them. Everybody, just the whole school wanted them, and everywhere else, and it was cool, man. Oh, yeah. Okay, now were you familiar with the production crew, the Bomb Squad, with Chuck D in them, or? Nah, well, I, yeah, yeah, yes and no. Not as much as the older person would have been, but I think so. I, we knew it was another Bomb Squad, but our shit was more like running around Yonkers and 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 battling people and this and that. But I'm I'm definitely familiar. It wasn't. I don't think at the time it was. We was making enough noise for them to even care either. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then you guys renamed yourselves to the Warlocks. The Warlocks around the, around like that. Grave Digger era, that hardcore. Ah, okay. It was around yeah. that when you know that kind of kind of rap, and yeah, that's how we was. But not we wasn't all the way on it. But that's when that started coming along. Yeah, so that's how we got that. Uh, yeah, I mean, what was that called? Uh, hardcore. 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 Absolutely hardcore yeah. rap and shit. Yeah. Like you know, yeah, I remember it had it had a little glimmer in hip hop. It yeah. kind of came and went. That's it. That's <laughs> what it was. That's what it was, man. Where. <laughs> Uh, and then I guess you and Kiss showed up on Main Source's uh, second album. Yeah, yeah, that's when. Um, uh, I think Large like, Pro they, they left. Yeah, Large Professor had already quit the group. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I remember. And, that. and I guess the album it didn't really come out. I guess it kind of came out a bit later. Yeah, I don't know what the hell happened with that song. I remember doing a song, and um, I think I think at the time the Mushmen took us over there to them. It was the dudes we had a pre-production thing with, and um, met everybody and uh. This did that shit. That's crazy how we came full circle back with, uh, you know, Large Pro. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, at the time that you guys were coming up, was DMX coming up around the same time? Yeah, yeah. X, X was like, X was there already, actually. X is older than us. You know what I mean? Like, X been a legend to us. X been famous to, to us and Yonkers before y'all actually ever, ever, ever heard of X. We heard them, you know, we, we, we knew he was on, he was on fire. You know, he, X was really, really out there in the street, like robbing people and all that shit he's saying his rhymes, he was doing in Yonkers. He was doing crazy shit. That nigga was wild with it, but rapping and battling people. Then he, he with the dogs, he was loving the pit bulls and all that. So he was a star to us back then. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, no, I interviewed his uh, his ex-wife and I mm. mean, she she said flat out, I mean, he was he was addicted to crack. He would yeah, rob yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. For a hit, for a hit, and then get back to the studio. Absolutely. And record uh, I mean, In fact, uh, I mean, there was that famous story when uh, I guess Leo Cohen first mm-hmm. heard him rap, mm-hmm. and his his jaw was wired shut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, I remember from that. Getting, from getting into a fight. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had an altercation, and then um, yeah, you know, he got hit or whatever, but was still making him. He was doing that. He was still he was rapping like that before Kanye did that shit through the wire. <laughs> X, yeah. X did that back then. I know X was like, nigga, I did that first, man. <laughs> or Okay, so here you guys are. You guys are in Yonkers. You know, the Warlocks is yeah. now a thing. Styles P is part of the group, and you yeah. guys are putting demos together. Yeah. And was Sta- it Mary J. Blige that Sta- kind of. Potato, I got to tell you, Styles P is part of the group, but it wasn't no group. It was still me and Kiss, and we wanted to sign Styles. We was that young thinking hmm. like that. Yo, we're going to sign Styles. We're going to get him a deal and all that. And um, yeah, but it was still one big organization, like the crew, but we knew we had an artist. You know, and then yeah, Mary, Mary um was taking them little demo tapes that I used to tell you about them, t- them TDK joints, and bring them around to everybody on tour. She was blowing up and shit, and like we'll give her, we'll leave them in. A, she used to let me in. Her, her, her cousin name is Jamalco, J Bop, right? 
and he used to get Mary's car. They they extra tight. He going to roll with her, and she, he'll get the Jeeps, Cherokees, the Rangers, and all that. And then um, she'll let us ride around, and we riding around blasting the Wu Tang and this loving it. We'll leave the tapes in the car. So she started hearing them, and she started taking them on the road with her and puffing everybody, and that's how that took place. Where, okay, so and by this point, was Bad Boy already? You know, was Craig Mac out and Biggie out and everything else? Yeah, like yeah, that yeah. Or not nah, really? they was yeah. When we weren't famous, we didn't even get on yet. They was out. They was doing their thing. Hell yeah, Craig Mac, okay, Biggie. So, so Puffy was already starting to blow up. Yeah, he was starting to blow up. Boy. Yeah, they was, they was, they was. We always, we always refer to them as the, the uh, Chicago Bulls. They was that. They was about to be that. Yeah. Okay. So you guys, you guys, you know, came to Puff. He heard you guys, and then he instantly signed you. Nah, nah. She took process? us there. She took us to the office and all that, and we went up there, and he had us rap. And he was just chilling, like listening. You know, Puff on that cool shit. It's like, all right, dope. Let me hear some more. And then we start rapping again. Then we left. I think it was like, I think it was like uh, a day or two later. He was talking contracts and paperwork. Yeah, that's how that went with us. Word. And we wasn't even okay. we wasn't even sure yet because I remember, yo, dude, we had we had. I tell a story all the time. We had Chub Rock try to sign us back then. Um, this dude named Dave Hall, um, Eddie F. Um, uh, uh, several people wanted, wanted, was trying to sign us. And uh, uh, Mary, Mary put um, Suge Knight on the phone, called my mom house. Suge Knight called my mom house. That's the time when like, yo, I go in my mom room, get on the phone, kids go in the kitchen, use that phone. And we like, yo, what? And we, you, know, you know, the long cords and shit, come around looking at each other like, yo, and Suge like, yo, I need y'all come out here, man. Y'all shit is hot. And yada, yada. I guess, you know, before we signed with Puff. Yeah, crazy shit. We had, we had, some, we had some bidding. We had some bidding, God. Yeah. Okay, well... I mean, you could probably say at that time that Death Row was probably hotter than, yeah, well, than Bad Boy because yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. yo, Puff the, was the on Chronic way. was out, and Doggy Style, and absolutely, like, yo, they were absolutely. just completely yeah. off. Absolutely, it was like the, it was either New, that Puff in New York, or I mean, you had other like indie labels that was doing their thing and, and all that, but like Puff was on his way to be that. You know what I mean? Okay. And, and then it was sugaring him. Yep. When when you signed the deal with Puff, did you have lawyers involved and you know yeah, to look yeah, over yeah. everything? The or? whole the whole nine. We had our management. DNY was our management. You know you know. Ah right. Yeah, that's yeah. our management at the time. And then um and, and I gotta say I gotta say nothing to do with Mary. Mary put Mary put us in position and stepped back like yo y'all got this. Then asked for a fucking nickel. Not a not a not even when we blew all the way up millions and millions of records. She still didn't ask for nothing. Nothing. I told I love her the other day. I had her on our podcast. I was like yo. Fucking love you, Mary. Like she never asked for nothing from us. Most people would have been like, "Yo, like as as the successful as the locks, get back into it with us." Nah, never asked for nothing. But um, so she did that, stepped off, and then um, but in full support, all the way in full support for us. And then uh, got the lawyers, did the paperwork with Puff. And let's be clear, all the Puff paperwork at the time was legit, standard stuff, standard. Mm -hmm. He didn't pull no tricks. Wasn't no kind of nothing in there. Like later, like we was, you know. At the time, you're young and then you're getting frustrated. You start to say like, oh, the contracts and this and that. Nah, no, it wasn't, man. We knew, we seen what we were signing. Uh, uh, Lloyd seen what we were signing and, and our, um, and DNY seen that. Everybody seen it. So it was no, 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 no blame. Right. And you guys were, were brand new artists at Absolutely. the time with, with no track record. And people yeah. really need to understand that when it yep. comes to these, these record deals, you know, nine out of 10 new artists end up losing money. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and so you're, and you're not going to get the best deal and fresh off the block. You have no equity in the game right there. You just hot on the streets, but not everywhere else, so to say, right? You get what I'm saying? You're making yep. your mark. You're making your bones, but not. it ain't going to show legally on, on contract yet. So that's yep. how that went. Okay. So you guys signed a bad boy. Yeah. And uh, was You'll See the first time that you guys rapped, you know, under bad boy? You'll see probably the first record that came out, that came yeah. out with Bad Boy. Yeah, I want to say that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I remember hearing that in a club called The Palladium up here when that shit came on. I waited to the end of the club when the lights came on and that motherfucker, he turned on the play, he turned on You'll See and all that. But um, we rapped with him on several of ours, like at, um, at the High 97 and Freestyle and then all that kind of shit. So we, we've been doing all that with Big and all that. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I remember hearing an interview, I think it was on Genius, where... I guess you guys felt that Biggie actually dissed you on that same record. On you'll see, yeah. I, th I, I, I think, I think like, cause we, you know, when you when you get in the game and all that, you going first, you go first and shit. So then the, the old G's just sit back and be like, all right, you know, whoever's going first got that other person got a chance to take that shit home and listen to it. 
So when it, you can say niggas talking it, but ain't living it, you can say all that wild shit like, oh shit, I, and then what could you say? That's big, nigga. It is, you got that, homie. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Word. <laughs> I mean, big, big is a beast. You Dog, know, I, I seen, remember I was when in... I interviewed. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I remember when I interviewed Buster Rhymes. Yeah, and uh, I said, "Yo, I remember this is such a dope interview." I said, "Yo, you've done a million features. Do you think uh, anyone ever got you on a feature?" He's like, "I don't know. Do you think anyone has ever got me?" <laughs> I said, "I said, flavor in your ear remix." Uh, did you feel like anyone's ever got you on a song? You, t- you tell me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, think. I, 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 I can't think of one. I ain't in no rush. <laughs> think. This is something that I love to really... Okay, I, I'll, I'll keep it 100 with you. Mm-hmm. The Flavor in the Year remix. I think Biggie got you on that one. I hear you, homie. I respect that. You respect that? And Biggie is my brother. <laughs> <laughs> Who you think got everyone him? In the, everyone in the studio said, ooh. Oh, shit. Who got him on that? Biggie. No. Wait, oh, you said, yo, you asked Buster that. Did I asked Buster you that. Asked, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. You no, know, don't be mad UPS is hiring. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Still I could have just said it vice versa. Got you. Absolutely, he did. Yeah, he nailed yep. that. He killed that shit. He killed yep. that word. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, Biggie was an interesting one because I remember hearing this old interview or reading about this old interview where he was basically, you know, people were asking him to rank different rappers and they brought up Craig Mack. And he just yeah. dissed Craig Mack and said, nah, I, yeah, I ain't fucking with I him. Think, Even though they're on the same label. Yeah, I know. I think when we got there, they wasn't really, when, when, we had, when we got to the label, I think he was on his way out. I think they yeah. wasn't getting along or whatever reason and this and that. I, I, I heard, I'm not sure that he wasn't with, because Mack Mac, Mac was on top at first, right? Famous thing, you mm-hmm. might got to refresh me with it, some of it, because we was just Yeah, yeah, flavor, flavor in Your Ear, I think, was the first single was, off was, was lit. That shit was lit. So, um, oh, yeah. And Puff started merging, I heard, Puff started merging the Big Mac promotional stuff, you know, like like mm-hmm. the Big Mac, like the sandwich yep. and shit, and like, I heard, I heard Craig wasn't with all that, rest in peace and all that, you know what I mean? Like, I heard he wasn't with yep. all that merging, because he was the man. And Big was like, all right, watch, soon, I'm up soon, like, you know, and I heard Craig wasn't with that. Word. Yeah. Yeah, rest in peace, Craig Mac. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But you yeah. see how that go though, man? You know, who knew that Big was gonna do it like that? Oh yeah. I mean, when you guys were on Bad Boy and Big was really starting to do his thing, yeah. uh, did you have any idea that, you know, 30 years later he would still be considered one of the best ever? Um Yes and no. That's a tricky question. Yes and no. We just knew he was great. We knew them stories and everything he was telling was amazing and, and his aura and, and how he went about his shit like man and um and um we knew he had something with him like he even even I think you know if he was here business wise he would have been in a position the same as same as Hove and and anybody else like when we were there at the label big were like yo nah puff they need to do this nah puff they can't stay over there I need them in this hotel over here with us like he had a lot to say at bad boy he was he was an artist but he he you know he knew his shit yeah what do you think was the craziest experience you had with Big? Something you may have not have mentioned before. Uh, I think I told all the story. You know, we were there that night that he passed, and um, right. And, um, and we'll, yeah. we're, we're going to get to that. But yeah, but before uh, as far that. as this hanging around, nah, nothing, man. Nah, just asking us to get on them fucking records. To, to you know, just to get on those records. That was it. The craziest shits for me and this. Yo, Luch, you got the liquor, and I, I, I go get the Picardi Limon, and shit. And we just be in there drinking and shit, and just tell everybody pass out. He'll wake up with his lyrics to go in the booth and get busy. Yeah, crazy. So was it was it crazy? You know, because I assume that you're you're a writer, mm-hmm. right? You write Absolutely. down your lyrics, everything. Yeah, and and that was always the case in hip hop. Period. Yeah. Until until yeah. I think Biggie was the first big rapper that kind of mm-hmm. was the one that would go in and just. You know, he would yeah, memorize yeah, the yeah. shit in his head yeah, and then sure. go in and do it. Yeah. Was that crazy seeing Absolutely. someone do that? Yeah, yeah. It's still, it's still crazy to me to this day. Styles does that. I would think he sleep mm. on the couch, like passed out. He'll wake up and go in the booth. Like, damn, it's when you ready to go? And he's like, yeah, I was just thinking of it. I thought you was asleep. But Big would do that too. Smoking, sitting there, drinking, chilling, chilling, chilling. I right, tell whoever, yo, yo, D-Dot, t- turn that on. You know what I mean? And he ready to go. That's, that's crazy. I got to write yeah. that down. I'll be writing all that down. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so here you guys are a bad boy, mm. and, and Biggie and Pac are, are close friends at one point. Mm. But then 
after Pac goes to prison yeah. and he feels like that he got that, hit that, up, that, set him up, you know, that him. Biggie right. slighted him. I mean, I don't think he really felt that he set him up. Mm. I just felt like he felt like Biggie didn't have his back mm. in terms of, you know, helping him out in terms of who did the shit or whatever else. So right. Pac comes out and he's on fire. All eyes on me is the biggest thing ever in mm -hmm. hip hop. Yeah. And then and then hit him up comes out. Mm. And you guys don't get mentioned. But right. everyone else on your label does. Yeah, we was brand new. We kind of was, you got to realize we was just getting there. Like we was hot in the streets as, as these guys and, and, and all over these Clue mixtapes and all that on fire. Don't get me wrong, fire. But really just getting to that, to that, to the, to the label. You know what I mean? And, um, and um, um, I remember, I remember me, Kiss Styles, we wanted to get in some of them battles and them beefs. We had real, we wrote lyrics and shit for, for them niggas and all that. But uh, they was like, nah. I remember DNY saying nah, Puff saying nah, big all of them like nah, the dog that ain't that ain't you know what I mean? We wanted to get we thought you know that's what you do, coming from where we from like you jumping in that shit you can't you know but it was it was bigger than that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you have Tupac diss lyrics somewhere. We got, in yeah, we, yeah, we was ready for like the crew. That's how it went. Like we was ready for like because we rappers, we rappers and shit. So we yo, let's let us we down with you. We got your back. If you know Junior Mafia could rap, but we yo you got some niggas that we was like trying to say we. You got some new young bulls on this label over here that we just getting into the game. Yeah. 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 Well, I remember I interviewed Slim from 112 mm -hmm. uh, about that time. And he said that things got dicey in terms of you know going to the West Coast, Hell sometimes yeah. even going down south, people choosing sides, you yeah. know, safety issues and so forth. Like, like he said, what even was in that the South, like that was happening in the South too. Boy. Yeah, he said that, you know, because people were choosing sides. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, there was a lot of Tupac fans out there. Yeah, true. Definitely, definitely. Uh you know, Pac was great at what he did. Uh, I don't, I ain't know what was happening down south in Atlanta and all that, but I know we used to go like after everything was taking place, and Puff like, I mean, I remember after Big Dot, and we went back to LA. How crazy it was! I mean, with the, the security all around our trucks and the walking like like the, the shotguns and and AKs out and all that. It was like, yo, dog, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? It was that kind yeah. of movement out there. But we had to go. You had to actually. People don't know in this game. At the time, right before the digital stuff, now you can do everything online. But before, you had to go to LA to do your press. You had to, and you had to come over here in New York to do. It was like both to make your to make your rounds. Yeah, so we had to move around out there. I mean, while Pac was still alive, did you guys have any issues on the West Coast nah, or nah, anything yo, else? Yo, like let me that? tell you something. Nah, yo, we never. I don't. Unless kissing them could tell me different. I don't remember ever meeting Pac. That's hmm. what I'm trying to say. We came into the game around like the tail end, like some of the beef, but like. It was fading out, like you know what I mean. It was kind of like that yeah. with us. Well, then in 1996, Tupac gets killed. Mm -hmm. How did you feel when you heard the news? I didn't think. I thought I thought he was gonna be all right. I thought he was gonna be all right, like you know, grazed or probably hit, and he gonna pull through. And that's not even sounding generic. I actually thought he was gonna be all right, you know, like that. Yeah, and you know, I did an interview with Keefy D, one of the guys in the car, mm -hmm. you know, that you know that killed Tupac essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, you know, Orlando Anderson's uh, uncle. Wow. And, uh, you know, I mean, he laid out the whole story from beginning to end. Wow. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a crazy story. Uh, I mean, was Puff kind of stressed out during this time? Because because Pac was going at him hard. Puff is a guy, let me explain something. From what I knew back then, you know, of course, everybody's different people now, older and, and different views on it. He, he kept everything to himself. He would never show it. Puff would never show, like, like he ain't gonna see, you ain't gonna see him sweat at the time. It was more like, nah, nah, we good. We gonna do that. Nah, don't worry about that. He he'll he'll like he'll 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 brush it off. You get what I'm saying? Not saying that he didn't care about it, but he ain't gonna let anybody in that studio see that. He gonna say we got business to do. We need to go out there. We need to do this and that. That was the kind of person. He didn't show. He didn't show you all that. Like uh, you know the regular month like us. We man, fuck that. What's up? Like this and that. Where them niggas at? Like that's how the, the average person behave. He would he'll be like, nah, look, this is the business. This is what we gonna do. Yeah. Well, then in 1997, you guys were in LA, yeah, uh, leaving uh, leaving an industry party. It was a Vibe magazine and, and party, yeah. The Vibe party, right? And I remember me and you talked about this in our last interview. Yeah, you got you guys were gonna get in the same Hell car yeah. as Hell Biggie, yeah, and he told y'all not. Nah. Hell yeah! I, I mean, the straight truth to that story. With them young boys say no cap. That's real shit. Like yo, dog. We came out. I remember because when we first got into the party. I think Puff had wanted us to write something or do something for him, and then we ain't do it that day. 
And we started like a little light argument with him when we got into that party that night. I think it was like, yo, y'all could come party and this and that, but y'all can't help me with this song. It was some shit like that going on. And then Big, I remember Big saying, yo, dog, it's my party. Chill. We ain't with this shit tonight. Like, you know what I mean? With, with us arguing with, with um, Puff, right? Dope ass party. Everybody chilling. And, um, and when we left, we was like, yo, we getting, all of us, we getting in your van with you. We getting in your truck with you. He said, nah, nah, I got to go take care of something, fam. Meet me up the hill. Clue was having a party up there. He said, meet me up there. I'm going to just do this and come right back. I said, look, we're going to ride. We're going to ride with you. And he like, yo, my nigga, I swear to God, they was just like, yo, don't worry about it. And then finally Dean was like, nah, come on, don't worry about it. We meet him at the um, clue shit. Because we thought they was going to leave us to go get into some other cool shit. You know what I mean? But, um, and they did. And we got up to, uh, up the hill to, uh, to clue shit. And we stand around. I see my nigga Broadway in there, uh, the rapper Broadway and shit back then, right? He like, yo, you ain't here? I'm like, here what? He said, yo, blah, 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 blah. I said, oh, get the fuck out of here. We left. We rushed up out of there, went to the hospital, and that's all I, everybody was, was dead. Yo, dude, I seen Big's hat on the floor. I should have grabbed it. I seen his hat. Big's hat that he was one of the widest and taking it, and, you know, and they rushed him in. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, from what I understand, he was, I think, killed instantly. Like, it wasn't mm. like a, a long, drawn out mm. process. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. So yeah. it was, it was, um, I remember like, uh, then after, because the word spread fast, fast, and we was on different times in LA. I called my mom, rest in peace. I called my mom. I was like, yo, because she was, because everybody at home was nervous. You know, your babies is all the way out on the West Coast. Now, it ain't like down the block. You know, like, yo, what's going on? I said, he getting us out of here tonight. I think he wanted everybody pack, and we, we out. And we got on the jets and everything, and we left, man. We was all in the room, dog. It was me, Super Mario, Mace, uh, uh, all of us just talking like, yo, what the fuck? Because we just got there. Like, is this shit crumbling? Is my homie, is the big homie dead? Like, you know, and yeah, so. Yeah. Sad moment, man. Sad moment that yeah, still remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we made, you know, after that, we uh, made uh, Love. Later. After that, we made uh, Love Big Papa when he passed, right? You know? And that gave Puff yeah. the motivation to, to make Missing You. He called and told us, like, yo, I, I appreciate you guys making that record. And then he made his. Yeah. Uh, right. And. And your verse in We'll Always Love Big Papa, yeah. you said something about you and Pac probably hugging right Absolutely. now. Absolutely, yeah. I guess you with the real king in New York now and all that. I'm saying all that in there. Word. Yeah. That, that was a dope lyric, man. That's what's up. That was a dope lyric. And considering the history of Pac and Bad Boy. Absolutely. And that, that was big of you to actually say something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you know, ain't no, y'all ain't beefing up there. It's, it's all love now. All this shit down here was for nothing. It's love at the end. Yeah. Well, right around the time... Um, well, I think before uh, We'll Always Love Big Papa, that's when All About the Benjamins uh, came out. Did it? I don't know. It says, uh, I looked it up, it says 97. Mm. August 12th, 1997 was when it was released. Oh, so we was on fire then. We was lit yeah, around was that, because that shit, yeah. man, once that hit, it was like back to the party. It was like, yo, these DJs is playing that Benjamin shit 30 times, and that's when the DJ would play it over and over and over on the radio or at the club. Bing, ding, yep. ding, ding. It's like, yeah. Well, I would consider that one of the greatest hip hop beats ever. Yeah. All, I mean, well, from, 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 from the growth of it, yes. Yes. You know, it wasn't to me at first. So, and that's, that's my question. When you first heard the Benjamins beat, you just felt like, nah? Yeah, yeah, nah, nah. I said, this ain't it. This ain't, <laughs> yo, let me tell you something. Yo, Vlad, we walked in. As soon as we walk in, we coming from Yonkers. We high, drinking, fucking some, whatever we was drinking and shit. Uh, Walked in, he called us in this little room. They got like midi rooms, probably the size of this shit, like a little midi room, right? We all walked in, and um, and um, he in there playing his beat. I'm automatically thinking, because this is when we was making our album, I'm automatically he gonna push a track on us. Because at the time that was happening, like, yo, I need y'all on this song. We kind of was like, we went from having total creativity with all our stuff to like somebody there actually molding your project, and we wasn't used to that kind of shit. Coming from the street, like, nah, I do this song. They ain't gonna like that. And it's only gonna like it here in New York. They're gonna love it in Texas. They're gonna love it over here. We was like, dog. You know, that was what that was kind of our thing with Puff, our struggle. You know what I mean? So we thought he was pushing his Benjamin beat on us. And um, and um, you know the story, right? And I said, I said, yo, we walked in. He's like, this girl was in there. She like, yo, I told the story. This girl was in there, she was like, yo, let me hear you rap. I said, all right. I said, I'm strictly trying to cop those colossal size Picasso, yada, 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 yada. She said, let me hear you something from you. Kiss did his, his verse. Cause none of this shit was written to that beat. It was just a, a song, like something we had. Everybody rap. And she said, yo, you on this song, you gonna do this. And, and 
and y'all gonna write pub verse type shit. She put that together and they start laughing and dancing and shit. And it was Missy Elliott that whole time. Like, you know what I mean? I said, oh shit, she started beatboxing and doing some shit. I never, I never, I ain't bumping to her yet to like relive this story with her, but I heard somebody brought it up to her and was like, yo, Sheik is right. That's exactly how it happened. And she mapped that whole shit together and then Puff named it the Benjamins and all kind of rock versions and it, it just. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, were, were you guys writing a lot for Puff during that time? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. 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 Definitely Kiss. Definitely Kiss. Yeah. That was probably one of his things. Like, you know what I mean? Because, um, you know, when you start when you start writing and doing favors for people, it, you know, it becomes like a, 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 just a natural thing. Kiss started seeing, yo, people get paid for writing for people. You know what I mean? And a lot of money. And, and you know, at the time, it was some homeboy shit with Puff and Kiss. Like, yo, don't worry about it. I'm going to write this. But everybody else was, you know, getting, getting, getting fresh. So that's kind of was like a little of the argument. That was it. Okay. So... Then you guys drop your first album, yeah. Money, Power, Respect, uh, with the song Money, Power, Respect on it as yeah. well, which was an absolute banger. Crazy, crazy. Insane. Yep, Money, Power, Respect. With my yep. homie, we put, we put, and, the, we put uh, X on it. All yep, that. yep, DMX is on it. Blew uh, up. And, you know, uh, Lil' Kim is on it. Absolutely. Blew, blew up, blew up. I remember walking into the studio because um, it was Kim and, and, um, and um, Styles. He was in there working on a hook. I was like, yo, this track is fire. And um, they kind of had mapped it out by the time I even got in that night. And, you know, it came out crazy. And now the world got to hear X for real, for real. Word. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, the album, Money, Power, Respect, comes out. Yeah. And it goes platinum. Absolutely. So how does it feel to be, you know, basically fresh off the block Facts. and having a platinum album? Facts. Incredible. Incredible to love. You know, and, and then touring and all the touring was new to us. Before, we just going to regular... Shows getting on stage at whatever, and then when you start, when when you know the notoriety and and um, doing radio and hitting the tunnel and club speed and all these places and people going crazy for you, it was like yo, you know what I mean? Because we ain't come from that. We ain't come from that. Like I said, we was running around doing other stuff, and um, we had strong strong parents and stuff, but like you know, we was running around doing other stuff, so it felt great. Yeah. Right, and then you know, Puff started putting you on a bunch of. You know, big song. Yeah. Like Mace's uh, 24 Hours to Live. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mariah Carey's Honey. Honey. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Uh, J-Lo, Jenny's from the Block. Facts, facts. You can't. Come on now. Uh, you guys are, are, doing, are doing your thing, but along yeah. with that, this was like the shiny suit era. Absolutely. No, that, it's definitely um, Jiggy. Jiggy was yep. like that. When that shit came out, it was the shiny suit shit, and, and we'll go to Puck, and you mentioned Mace. All his videos had the shiny everything, so anybody in his video now I could come like this to a nigga video and, 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 and get love and the camera flash on me and I'm lit. Before, you, back then, you had to throw in the whole form of John glitter shit, right, and get in the video and, and, you know, and do and walk down the strip in Vegas. People loved it. It put everybody in a, in a, a I always tell the story, that shiny suits put me in a different tax bracket, 100%, <laughs> a definitely different tax bracket, but, you know, it wasn't the locks. It wasn't the locks on what you known us for coming up. Yeah. Right. And the whole time you guys are being managed by D and Wa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who then launch Rough Riders. Yeah. And DMX becomes a superstar. Absolutely. Yeah. On the label. Yeah. And now you guys actually wanna jump ship and leave Bad Boy yeah. and go to Rough Riders. Uh -huh. But you guys are on paperwork. Absolutely. That same paperwork we talked about earlier. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. that we signed and, um, um, you know, and like I said, like one more time with Puff, cause I, cause I love that brother, man. Um, it was the same paperwork binding to us and we just want it off. We think we, at the time we thinking automatically, yo, just let us off Puff. And that's how it works. It don't go like that. It don't go like that at all. You got to go through shit. Money was spent. Who's getting reimbursed? Is this new label ready to do it? The new label we wanted to go to wasn't ready to do that yet. The, the money that Puff wanted, they just, you got to understand D and Y. Wait, was fresh, fresh off the streets for real, for real. Like you know what I mean. And I'm um, starting their movement. They was managers for of us, of us, but not. They weren't like a. They weren't the managers that's in the game already. That you know you pick up these. Nah, these are our brothers learning the game. So yeah, man, we want it off. And our only way to knew, that we knew how to get it off was with Puff. The kind of person with Puff was to bring it to the to the streets with the Let the Locks Go campaign. We right. did that shit at one of them summer the, jams. T-shirts, t-shirts, yo, yo, the yo, you seen it? We had hats, t-shirts. We was, yo, we had the whole crowd. Let the locks go, yo, yo. Um, the, yeah, like, so, like, the, 
chicks and chicks and y'all like, hey Puff, he'll he'll turn, they go, let the locks go, mother. Like, yo, it'd be, it'd be some crazy shit like that. That shit was getting to somebody that would get to you. You know what I mean? And then finally he was like, yo, whatever y'all want to do, y'all good. Y'all got my blessings, y'all could go. And we had to um, what we had to do, like, you know, you get uh after a certain album, certain amount of albums, and um, then your publishing comes back. You know, you know, it's a procedure. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I remember, I think it was like around uh, 2005 or whatever, uh, you guys went on on the radio, I think it was Hot 97, yeah. talking about how, you know, Puff still owns part of your publishing, yeah. and, and I Duh. think like Jadakus was talking about dropping, dropping. a refrigerator, refrigerator on or something off crazy. Them, all that crazy shit. Yo, and the crazy shit, I, I tell the story all the time. I'm in there, I got a project out, I got I like an album out, I'm thinking my brother's going to come up to the radio and help me promote my shit. These niggas, this shit had nothing to do about Sheik. I'm sitting there looking like, the fuck, man? I got a new album, this song. These niggas, they talking about dropping refrigerators. Yo, Puff on the line. Yo, dog, no Sheik, no single, no nothing. Them niggas just deboed me, dog. <laughs> Crazy. I'm looking like, yeah. Then I think Angie finally said, okay, um, so Sheik, the song you got out, man, they don't want to hear that shit no more. I'm out of here, man. And that's how that went. Yeah. Well, well, but I remember, I think, like, the next day, Puff went on the radio and actually gave y'all your publishing back. Yeah, yeah. See, what? See, you know, you understand, like, that's how Puff was. Legally, you're not going to get to him. You're not going to get to you. You can't touch that man financially, lawyer-wise, none of that. We don't, come on, now we, you know what I mean? So, so hurting him that way, it'll take years. That's the definition of being shelved. We went other routes. Like, yo, we you know, we, we, and that, that Puff wasn't with that. He couldn't stand that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we should we kind of we we did give motherfuckers the blueprint on how to go about shit. We was the first artist I think ever to say we're not happy with our situation. We went off. I can't be all the way correct on that, but like you know, I'm pretty sure all the Motown days and all that. But I'm just saying that we was like one of the first to to be rebels in this to say we don't like our paperwork. We went off. We want to go about it this way. Niggas wasn't doing that. Now you see it all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, and then you guys joined uh, Rough Riders, our, which was our brothers slash management that got a sick ass movement. But you got how, you see how they did it. They they had X on all these big locks records. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and 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 niggas done started something and all this kind of stuff all over the streets. It just got crazy. Yeah, it was smart. Well, as you guys are building up and, and moving around and doing tours, you know. Things happen along the way, yeah. And one one of those things was the the brawl that happened in Boston with Ray Benzino, hell yeah, and his crew, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, was it over? I'd heard different stories about what it was over. I heard that like someone who looked like DMX had done something to a girl or <laughs> some, some shit like that. Or yeah, what, I heard Zeno say that. What was that beef over with Benzino? Listen, man, I, I heard Zeno's whole side of it the other day on um, I don't know. Who, yeah, he was on. I seen it on Instagram somewhere. He was telling his side that. And then I seen it on the um on the, uh, the documentary. But to my understanding, we all in the dressing room, and we hear, we hear some commotion and shit. My man run in and shit. Say he say he say yo, Zeno and them there. They in the hallway. They looking for X. X had done something allegedly done something to uh to one of their sisters, like you said. And um it wasn't like one of their sisters or something. But he, he ain't coming out the dressing room. They banging on his door. He ain't he ain't coming out his dressing room. He in there though. He in the dressing room. They said they're gonna fuck up everybody on the tour if they can't get to him. Us, word. Yeah, you know, you know, Zay Styles go to all way. Let me go see what's going on with this shit, Lucha. All right, go ahead. Me and me and me and busy in the back. We drinking and shit. Whatever cards in the dress room. Styles come back in. Yo, fuck that. All right, then it was on. It was on the locks the, with them in the locks. Hell yeah. They was How deep, deep though. Were you guys they, that night? Because it wasn't just the three of y'all. Nah, it was like probably six of us, seven of us. <laughs> They had a hundred motherfuckers with them, but we was getting busy. We was getting busy. Yeah. They, they had a lot. They had a lot of motherfuckers looking for X. We came in the hallway and just got straight to it. Right. And yeah, I guess people yeah. Get it started. Like, I think one. Of, I think they threw something. One of my homies threw something back. Like the fuck out of here. And, and their crew was like the fuck out of here. And that shit was like West Side Story at first. Yo, it was like you know like a line. Nobody went cross that shit. So so we got a pop. Huh? Boom. Then it starts. All right. <laughs> Okay. Shout and out, yo, guess, shout uh, out though. What, look, I gotta say, shout out to the whole Boston. I fucking love y'all. Shout out to Zeno, the whole crew, and that's that, man. Um, um, good yeah. times. Good, <laughs> good times. Right. Yeah. Well, I guess when when police finally showed up and broke it up, I guess one of the cops told y'all that you guys should have killed Benzino. No, yeah. Well, the motherfuckers, they took us. They was putting us in the same bullpen with all them Boston niggas, and 
paddy wagons and all that shit with them. And um, and then when they when they took us in like separately, they was actually like, yo, so where's Zeno? Why none of y'all got Zeno? Why y'all didn't bring him in? Whatever he had going on out in Boston, they wanted his ass. They wanted his ass. They were like, yo, they talking about his pops and and him and where's he at? Nobody got him. Man, <laughs> word. Like some some TV shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Benzino's got a long history. Yeah, you know, exactly. As well as, well as his, I mean, I interviewed him and his father at one point. Absolutely. So yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, they, was, they yep. wanted his ass. Yep. yep. Okay. And then at one point came the Rockefeller beef. Yeah. I don't know how to... How, now... How did that start, though? I don't even remember how it started. Yeah, how, how did that start? Because at <laughs> one point, y'all just started going at it, and I still uh, don't know why. Damn, I wish, one, I wish one of my brothers was here for this one. I do not remember how it started, but I know it was with Beans and all and all um and Hov at the time. And Hov at the time. And um um Hov really never like he 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 might have threw a couple darts here and there, but never really like got at us like the the rest of them. Because Beans and them, Beans and them, you know, them niggas can rap. They nice with that shit. Like their whole crew. They they was the only, they I swear to God, like everybody we battled and did whatever with, they was the only crew. That was getting on my nerve, like got to me lyrically. And yo, them <laughs> niggas was saying crazy catchy shit. These Philly niggas like was spitting. And we we could sit ourselves dope as rappers, and them niggas was spitting, like, oh. And then they was get then them, them niggas would say shit like they had somebody around them telling them shit like where and what you wore, what you where you live, and yada yada yada. I'm like, who the fuck is around telling this nigga this shit? <laughs> it's somebody, it's some it's somebody with them. Yeah, it was like that, man. So yeah. I mean that was that was an epic beef, and I think uh, when you guys were on Rap Radar, uh, I guess uh, Rockefeller was on Hot ninety seven with Flex, mm. and they were just going in on y'all. And Hell I guess yeah. Jadakiss got so angry that he wanted to go grab his gun and oh, go down yeah, the nah, station. That's and- real shit. I remember being there. We in the car. They at the station going in. Nigga said one of them niggas said because Mary had the No More Drama album. The nigga said, ask the locks. Yonkers don't want no, ask Mary. Yonkers don't want no more drama. Some slick shit like that. I said, oh, where them niggas at? What studio they at? Let me got to go there to the station and all that. Or, you know, because it, it was different. Like when we, when we like with Battle and 50 and all that kind of stuff back then, they wasn't really trying, they wasn't getting at us lyrically. It was more like say funny shit about us or dissing us other ways, not lyrically. Philly, all them, they was rapping, rapping. Yeah. So, you know, dope. Good shit. Yeah. Uh, what ultimately ended it, and what was there just like a, a squashing of the beef, or did y'all just finally stop? Both. both I, I think ways? it was it was it was a bo- it was both. Um, I remember seeing Freeway uh, uh, in a hotel one time, and I heard he was staying there. I told one of his homies, tell him come downstairs, down to the to the lobby, and then he came down, and we chopped it up, pieced it up, and um and um, I seen I seen Memph in the airport. Went up to him like boom, boom, boom. It was it was little stuff like that to where then it just eased out. I don't, I'm not too sure how Styles um kissing um beans in them, how it, how it um yeah. But so once once again, all the way see, I goes back to the building through the grace of God. None of us ever got into nothing physical with none of these rap beefs that we had. And yo, and the nigga, yo, let me tell you, beans was on it for real, for real. We was on it if it took place and we, and we crossed paths like that. But even when we crossed paths, it didn't happen. But that nigga Beans is out there like, yo, say it because we was on fire. So a locks promotional truck would come through Philly. That nigga Beans would drag the drive out. He'll drag him out like, bang, fuck out of here with this locks truck. Really? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And Beans is on that shit. Like, word. So, that, you know, but through the grace of God, nothing ever happened with nobody. man. Yeah, no, I mean, Beans is a criminal. I mean, uh, yo, yo. In, 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 in and you, out man, for, nigga, for years. Like, yo, <laughs> smack the drive up. Don't ever drive this shit around here, this locks fan. <laughs> like, yo. Yeah. Okay, but y'all actually ended it on some grown man shit. Absolutely, nah, no, no. Thank God, man. And it, we knew, we knew what time it was. I used to, I remember going down. There's the store called Mitchell and Ness, and that's where you had to go down to um um in Philly. You, you know where they got all them jerseys at and, and all that mm-hmm. shit. We used to be hammered up just to go down there and shit. Like, oh man. And this is the place that I love. I love Philly. You know, so it's dope, man. Yeah, and uh, my condolences uh, to Freeway and Estina, who just lost their that. sons. Wow, shit. both of them. So that's very sad. I can't even imagine no shit like that. For real, for real. I've yeah. just seen that. Yep. And especially, you know, with Freeway going through the, the kidney failure and mm-hmm. the kidney transplant and, yeah. and going through all that and yeah. making it and then losing his son at wow. the end of all that, man. Wow, it's, that's very, it's very rough. sad, man. Um, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know too much. I just, you know, I seen it and um, for both of them, both of them too. 
It's like it's I, I can't even imagine. I'm 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 fucked up for some shit like that. Was it was it violence yeah. or what? You know something? I had heard it was it was car accidents. Oh, That's shit. what I heard, but I yeah. haven't really confirmed it right. Uh, right. from a, a real source, which is why we never put it out. But that, that's what I heard, but I, I might be wrong. Yeah, I yeah, absolutely. Wrong. Don't even, don't even tell you, yeah, just leave it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, then at one point came the whole G-Unit beef. Yeah. That, then uh, that, you know, you know, and that, that whole G-Unit beef was uh, really nothing to do with me and Styles. You want the truth? None at all. Niggas never... Ni- None of them said our name at all. Not because they were scared or no kind of nothing. It was they they got it. It really, anybody that was on the song with Ja Rule, that's who 50 had a problem with. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you got on that New York record and the song was big enough New York, because I'm from New York, that was a whole New York record that Ja had that was that was hot to death. So if you was on that, mm-hmm. he had a problem with you. But us, the kind of niggas, we all be like, yo, get the fuck out of here. You get what I'm saying? And lyrically, right. who won it? That's it. Right, because uh, cause 50 dropped a uh, window shopper, mm-hmm. you know, where he calls out uh, Jada Kiss. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I mean, that was a hell of a song, you got to admit it. It was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was cool. It was cool, but not, it, it wasn't battle ready. It wasn't, no, it, no, wasn't, it, wasn't, it, wasn't it wasn't a battle rap. So, no, no, it wasn't like an like a epic diss record, but it was, it was yeah, a hot right, record. Right, right, it right, 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 right. It caught on. It caught on. It even became like a yeah. top 10 record and all that kind of shit. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. But from our world, it didn't, it didn't hurt. That, that record didn't hit or hurt. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't a, you know what I mean? Lyrically, it wasn't right. that. Yeah. Yeah. But, and you guys went back at 50. And oh, a million fucking tracks. times, man. A million times. And the reason we went so long with it, well, I did, me, I can speak on it. The reason I went so long with it is like, I felt that he would have. Lyrically, I knew that they didn't, they didn't have nothing on us, lyrically. It, it was the most, to me, it was like Banks, Banks could have, but he kind of really did, he, he stayed out of that shit. Like he ain't really, he wasn't on it. You know what I mean? It wasn't no game, none of that at the time. It was like this, that. And um, uh, yeah, so we lyrically, I felt that they would have been on us like that. They just see he could have he kept going at Joe like that because he could. Us lyrically, we was ready, ready, ready. Yeah, that's how that went. Yeah. Right. And did it end when when 50 was on the radio, I think, with Angie and then Styles called in and they had that conversation? That might have been the last of that might have been the last of it. You know what I mean? Because I don't know, after that, um, I guess Kiss and everybody seen each other and um, chopped it up or whatever, whatever. And then things started changing as well in New York. Before it was like, um, you, no, no rappers would do a song with each other. Like, they had it real, like, we ain't had no unity here for mad long in New York. Like, you wasn't fucking with him, all these crews. Everywhere else was getting money together and doing big shit together. The South and all that was growing while everybody else was beefing. You know what I'm saying? Like, doing mad, mad unity while we was... Can't stand this person. I don't even know why I can't stand you, but we beefing with everybody over here. They was doing big shit. And that's how that happened. So after a while, New York started changing back to like some cool shit with each other. And then that was it. But I wish we did. Instead of, and honestly, I ain't gonna lie, instead of all that beefing, uh, I say this now, maybe because I'm older, grown up, I wish we did the tours together and got money how them motherfuckers was doing. Jesus Christ. Yeah. We did, New York would have been on top, top, top instead of beefing. Yeah. Well, then you guys started dropping uh, solo albums. Yeah. And I guess. Like the Locks is the only group to date that had, you know, of any genre that had three different members do solo albums, yeah. all of which debuted yeah. in the Billboard Top Absolutely, 10. absolutely successful projects, man. Yeah, which is a blessing. Which is a blessing because you know, like I said, we, yo, Vlad, man, here, here, here's the thing with me: why we do what we do. I always say it's God, it's a God given gift. It's not like I'm doing construction. I can pick up a pen and paper, and 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 write that. You know what I mean? And write my thoughts down, and I hope you love it. That's. That's that. Why you going? You might as well keep going. Keep your your physical and your your mind sane, and keep stay in shape, and keep your family together. You could do this. Yeah, I know it sounds corny as an old man talking like that, like trying to encourage nah, y'all, but that's all. what it's about. Them niggas is doing construction and and hurting themselves and doing all kind of shit. That's why they got to stop and, and and wait for their benefits. Nah, this is this. He gave you this to put that down. Oh yeah, and your pen never got never got lazy. That's right, I mean, yeah. And to now, this now, day, to these new projects. Dog, now I'm on fire, fire. Before it was this Jada and Styles. You get what I'm saying? It was this, it was this Jada and Kiss before. Like yo, and she like yeah, she can. Now, now I'm now I'm that nigga. Like yo, that nigga's a beast. Which leads you to beast mode and all that. Eh. Right, right. Because I remember in 2008, I think that that's this is when you and I had that interview. That's mm-hmm. when you dropped Silver, Silverback Gorilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I was starting to get you know? real. Just that state of mind, you know what I mean? If anybody, like whoever's listening, it's like that whole silverback is my beast mode, my gorilla, my mentality, state of mind, that, that silverback in that jungle, this concrete jungle, 
that I'm comparing myself to, man. Absolutely. Yep. Ain't gonna bother nobody, but you ain't fucking with that silverback sitting over there. Word. Right. And then uh, in 2012, you guys dropped, you know, the collab with Wu-Tang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do this. So me and Ghostface got this shit called Wu Block. Volume, yep. we, we on volume two right now. We almost done with volume two. We got like six songs done or so, or a little bit more. But um, yeah, uh, at first it was just like me and Ghost idea, and, but that shit just took off. Now like Chef, everybody's on board for volume two. It's like incredible. Like, you know, with the input and all kind of shit. Where, but it's still me and Ghost's right. baby. It's, our, it's still our baby. Yeah. I mean, the, the two of you had like a real close relationship? Me and Ghost, yeah. Yeah, that's my brother. Yeah. I hung up with him before I came here. Um, uh, and then um, my manager at the time, Mike Caruso, managed Ghost. And, and then was managing me and then started touring together and all that. And then we, instead of like two separate crews, got rid of the two buses. And now, yo, just bring a couple of your niggas, Luch. I bring a couple of mine and we just tour on that one bus, save money and writing on the bus. That's, you know, shit like that. Yeah. Well, uh, you guys, you know, the first album, Money, Power, Respect, that was 98. And then the second album, We Are the Streets. Yeah. Uh, that's the one that came out on uh, Rough Riders, right? Yeah. Definitely, we are the okay. streets. That was that was two years later, two thousand, and then sixteen years pass until the third album. Yeah, uh, Filthy America, it's beautiful. That came out in two thousand sixteen. Yeah, yeah. Why why wait sixteen years to put out an album? Um, because we was all dropping um street projects and anthems and stuff like that, and getting all over everybody projects and 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 and, and at the time wanted it to be right wherever we signed with whoever we signed with. Everybody came to us trying to sign the locks at the time. You know, I didn't even take Filthy America as one of our albums. You want the truth. We thought it was the something we throwing out to the streets and all that. And um, that's what we thought of it, like when we did it. Like, not saying it wasn't dope, but we didn't take it as how we took this last one, living off experience. Yeah. Okay. Because uh Filthy America came out on Rock Nation, right? Yeah, well, that's yeah, that's when we signed over there and figured out, yo, we could put this out, we could do this, we could do anything we want. But that's gonna, those are the advertisers before we drop this particular project that we just did. That's how we had it okay. in our heads. You know what I mean? Okay. And if you're talking about Rock Nation, you know, you have to have the blessing of Jay-Z. Absolutely. I mean, especially considering y'all's history. The whole, yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, that, I don't even know if he remember anything with any of that kind of shit. Oh, was there somewhere else with it? You know what I mean? But he's oh, okay. a clever, I mean, clever what he do. Interacting with him as you were Absolutely. Signing, or, every, or no? As soon as we, when we got there, he's in every meeting. Everything we do, like everywhere. Before the LA office and all that. You know what I mean? Coming in, saying what's up, chill for a minute. Emery, all everybody come in. Because, you know, these Emery and Tata and all of them, we came up in the same game with Swiss making beats for them and this and that. So it was like, yo, man, we happy y'all here, like, which is dope. And they embraced us incredibly. Word. All that. I can't even front. It's a dope place. Hove got it over there. And shout out to the whole Rock Nation. I'm not trying to sound generic or none of that. They got a bunch of young... It's, 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 it's so different than, like, than a regular record label with the, the old guys that you remember and you know that been there forever. Salute to them. I get it. I'm an old guy too. But they got new minds and shit and, and, and a whole team of computer guys sitting around and showing you graphic stuff. It's like, it's not, it's not what you think for a record label. It's, it's totally different. None of, the, none of the old heads that calling shots but ain't been to a club or really turned the radio or not. These are young guys that's into sneakers and giving you thoughts of this and that. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Well, and then the Living Off Experience album comes out uh, yeah. in, in August uh, yeah. of this year. Uh, and uh, I mean, dope project, by the Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Uh, very dope project. Yeah, the and, world loved uh, that one, man. I mean, you had West Side Gun and Benny the Butcher on it. Yeah. You had, uh, Produced Jeremiah by Large Professor. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You had T Pain on it, and then you mm -hmm. got DMX on it again. Absolutely. Yes. Um, even that Gazelle the regular that you're talking about, man, it was like only right. And produced by Large Professor at the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I seen him at one of Styles Juice Bar um, parties, and I said, Large Pro, we need you on something, man. And that's how that took place. And um, and DMX called him one night. He came to the studio on time, probably like two people with him. And, and he was only, we asked him to do a hook on it and he stayed, him and Styles chopping it up, he stayed the verses and, and all kind of shit. And, um, and, um, and everybody just fell in line. Even, even making that project, like going to LA, to Scott Storch and all over the place with these people, man. It, it's like nobody told us no, ever, ever. All right. Well, I mean, you guys came up with DMX. I mean, he's a little bit older. Yeah. So, yeah. but but you guys really had a, a lot of your success right around the same time. Absolutely. As his. Absolutely. And you saw him sort of. I mean, I think he was like the first artist to have two number one albums in the same year. Yeah. Like, he ever. Yeah. Yeah. See him at, blow at the time. All the way up. Yeah. Uh, 
and, and you saw this this massive success, mm-hmm. but then but then you saw you know the the drugs, oh, absolutely. you know, take a hold, the, the, the jail, you know, him going in and out of prison all the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, he got divorced, mm-hmm. you know, he got some other girl pregnant yeah. and, and you know, his wife, you know, and, and I remember I interviewed his wife, you know, his ex-wife, I was like, I get it. This, th- this is this is like the rock that kind of kept DMX in place right here. This is the stability. Oh, yeah, 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 to share it. Yeah, yeah, to share it. You know, oh, yeah, she he lost that, court. and it seemed like he started to really kind of go off the deep yeah. end. You know how I take it though. You know how I take it. Um, y'all got to see all that. We've been seeing it. Anything y'all seen with the drugs and everything else? We've been seeing it. We've been there. We've been seeing it. We know. We knew everything. Actually, some of the songs that y'all heard um, on these projects, he had a long time. He had them on mixtapes, and just redid it and put him on these. So we knew a lot of stuff already. You know what I mean? He just got, he still, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, what the crazy shit is he didn't kick whatever. He didn't kick whatever habits. He kind of just got more millions. He came into millions and, you know, he didn't actually go clean up and didn't become a star. He stayed the same and got millions. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I've, I've heard stories, uh, you know, I've heard how X would show up in the projects, you know, somewhere and then. You know, by by the next morning, all his jewelry had been sold, and you know he'd sell. You know, just just to basically get high. I know, and I'm laughing, but someone, yeah. someone had. No, I remember when I interviewed. Uh, I think it was Wa. Yeah, it, it was D. It was D or Wa. Yeah, because yeah. I remember I interviewed them separately, and and I remember how when they were first managing him, they would have to go threaten the oh, drug I mean, dealers. Oh yeah, yeah, like not not to sell to him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Or like, to get, that or to get, or to get whatever he gave up back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, all the time. All the fucking time. X didn't care. X didn't give a fuck. Like, yo, you know, he knew he got to get on stage that night and do whatever else. Like, you know what I'm saying? They, yeah. D and Y, they, they put like this, man. They had to work. D and Y had to work. <laughs> and now it wasn't just no cool out management shit. Them motherfuckers had to work. Yeah. Right. right. Uh, yeah, but but two, man, I mean, D and Y were such an inspiration to me. I remember this one time, me, me and Y talked about this when we were all together. And we were all going to, to Summer Jam, and I saw the way Wa walked with this group of people behind him, and I Absolutely. said, "Ah, one day that's gonna be me. Absolutely, this is, this is like a blueprint yeah. of, yeah. of what yeah, I'm yeah. gonna eventually build." Mm-hmm. And seeing that early on, man, was really amazing. They started uh, you know, the whole Rough Riders movement was honestly just amazing, incredible. Because it was, you know, what it was. I don't know if it was new to people, but it was refreshing to people. To you know, from the shiny suits. To seeing it switch mm-hmm. to, to 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 no shirts on pit bulls like it, it gave people to say oh shit I got a pit bull I do the same I, I, I fight these dogs you know I'm not supposed to but yo I fight these dogs I, I wheelie these bikes I, I run from cops it was like that kind of shit I know you've seen it with NWA and all that but it was refreshing you know I think kind of that's why um, um 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 Cash Money blew up the way they did it was refreshing like they was showing they wasn't showing the model chick the model bitch in the video they was showing some project chick. Fat stomach out with a fucking hole the top on, not supposed to have it on, but still wearing that shit. They was like, somebody could relate to in every one of them videos. That's how that shit blew. Yeah. Eh. Yeah, man. Amazing. You know, you look, like, what year was the locks or the warlocks, you know, mm-hmm. with all three members? When was that formed? The warlocks? With, with, with Styles P. Yeah, uh, the warlocks was late 80s. Was it late eighties, early nineties? Because we came out what our first project was what ninety eight. The Warlocks had to be uh, early nineties. Okay, so early, early. Let's 90s. just say let's just say nineteen ninety to, to right, keep right. it easy. Mm-hmm. You guys have been together as a group for thirty years. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, 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 take a look longer as friends. The, yeah, let's take a look at the hip hop landscape in terms of groups. Wu Tang. Broken up, back together, broken up. Absolutely. You don't Absolutely. know what's happening. You know, yep. Raekwon don't want to have nothing to do with nobody because yeah. the business ain't right. And yeah. Yeah, I had yeah, to review yeah, yeah. God. He had issues or whatever. Yeah. N- NWA, Ice Cube left. Yeah. You know, Dre left. Same. Beef with Easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tribe Called Quest. Five yeah. Dog and, and, and Q Tip were not, not good La. at the Not De La Soul. Not De La. Uh, De La. De La Soul together, cool, but you know, Fuji's. Uh, Mob Deep broke up at Everybody. one time. Yeah. Three Six Mafia broke up, yeah. just recently got back together. Naughty by Nature were broken up at one point. Dipset, yeah. in and out. But I can honestly say, the whole time that I have known about the locks, you guys have always been 
good. Salute. There's never been a breakup. There's ever. never been anyone talking bad about ever. anyone ever. Ever, ever, ever. ever. Thank you. I, I need, we, yo, Kiss always says it. We need more people to understand and, and, and give us a fucking award for that or something. Something needs to come soon or something, the, the, the locks award. If you make it this long and you still love your family and your brothers like that. I'm not talking about, you, like you said, you left them and you got back together. Nah, man. I, we together on the regular. I talk to him on a regular. Yo, you know, you know what helps? I'm talking to him not about music. I'm talking to his sons and, and family and everybody else not about music. Like when you check on your brother like that. And we in the studio together. We argue and, and you know, whatever. But if it's two against one, that, that majority rules. That's how we do it without shit. Like, and, and the respect level. I don't think these guys got the respect level for each other. You got to have that shit for the next man. Whether y'all rappers or not, like, you got to respect him. He got to respect you. And, you know, and the love you got to have for each other. I hate to sound corny like that, but, yo, it, it really is, man. Yeah, because I'm sure, just like every other relationship, I'm sure there were times where y'all had issues with Hell each yeah. other. But it, ne it never spilled into the public. It's not for the public. We from that cloth to where it's not for the public. It's not. It shouldn't be. If you arguing in the house with your brother and you tight at your brother, that shit shouldn't make it outside. Why is it making it outside? We ain't come from this social media bullshit to where you got to post every fucking argument that you have. Dog, I don't know these motherfuckers you posting to for what? You know what I'm saying? These niggas will post shit instead of, or text you instead of walking to the next cubicle to say what they got to say to you. You know where the fuck I'm at? Come see me. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Isn't yeah, it? man. I mean, that's the difference between uh, industry friends and real friends. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Those are my brothers, man. 100%. Yeah. I, I love it, man. It's, it's inspirational. Yeah. It's inspirational. Yeah. Uh, quite honestly. For real. Uh, you know, listen, Sheik, man, a uh, legendary career, uh, part of a legendary- You too, group, Vlad. Uh, yeah. le legendary catalog. Yeah, Legendary, time timeless songs. Timeless. Like I said, you could you could throw on Benjamins right now oh, yeah, in yeah, any yeah, club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I actually heard, I heard um, and when, when um, Wendy Williams' interview on DMX, she was like, yo, y'all in the locks could tour forever. Y'all catalog is retarded. Like, y'all don't got to make another record if y'all don't want to of the, you know, when before the COVID, we did an hour and a half on stage, right? Um, all hits. Mm -hmm. Not even the B-sides. Not even the niggas done started some, the John Blazes, band from, T none of that. We was doing like big, big records. Crazy, man. So yeah, we here, man. Yeah, man. Well, listen, uh. Always a pleasure when we sit down. Likewise, Congratulations. Brother. You yeah. look great, by the Thank way. You. you look healthy. That's what's up. You know, yeah, here we up. are in our 40s. Likewise. Still, I said that as soon as I it. seen you. Absolutely. Yeah. Genuine shit. No I appreciate doubt, man. you. You know that. Absolutely. You Until next time. All right, cool. Peace. Yep. Peace.